Now we're going to talk a little bit about access control. One of the most important things in any enterprise-grade deployment is understanding who your users are and what level of resources that they're able to access within your environment. So this is just as important for UCP. We're going to split it into two different categories. The first is OPN. This is authentication identification, understanding who your users are. And the second part is OTZ, understanding how to enforce particular levels of access to resources. Within UCP, you can manage users through one of two methods, built-in and LDAP Active Directory. So in built-in, the UCP controller allows you to set and create users and create accounts and provide different levels of access and maintain and manage things like passwords. And all of that is done directly within UCP. However, you may have a need to uh, connect to your backend Active Directory organization, which has a much larger level of users and allows you to integrate within your enterprise level deployment. That's where we offer support through LDAP Active Directory integration. It's important to note that in any time in UCP, you have to choose one or the other modes. Either you can run in managed mode and manage your own users, or you can use a backend LDAP Active Directory support and import users and teams directly into UCP. So that's auth then. Let's, let's switch over and talk to how auth z works. So in UCP, we have two different ways of enforcing access control. One is setting default permissions for individual users, and the other is providing team-based permission to container labels. Let's go through each of those in, in, uh, in sequence. So for individual user permissions, you can set a particular level of resources for a given user and this tells you what level of what type of resources they're able to access. So here are the four levels. There's no access, view only, restricted control, and full control. Each of these represents a different level of access to individual container and non-container resources within your UCP environment. Full control means that you are able to see and access all resources. You can start containers, stop containers, restart them, kill them. You're able to view and look at images, networks, and volumes. Restricted control means that you have almost all the abilities that you have in full control, but you're restricted from being able to do certain activities that you wouldn't want in a production-grade environment. For example, you're not allowed to exec into containers, or you're not able to access kernel-level functions using things like privileged containers. This might be more appropriate to people in an operations focus who need to run containers in production, but may not want to be able to edit them midstream. View only means that you can look, but not touch. You're able to do things like ls and inspect, but you're not able to edit the resources. This might be appropriate for security or analytics teams. Finally, no access means that by default, you're not allowed to see any resources that you're not explicitly allowed to access. This might be appropriate in, in a blacklisting situation where you only want to provide specific resources to a given, uh, given user at any time. So within UCP, let's say you create a series of users. We'll call them A, B, and C. When you create a user and when you edit a user, you can set something called the user default permission. This is what provides you coarse-grained access to containers that are unlabeled or to non-container resources like images, networks, and volumes. And you can set these individually for each user. So for example, for user A, I could set view only. For user B, I could set full control. And for user C, I could set restricted control. And again, you can decide that if you want to change this at any time as an admin, you can do so after, uh, after you've created the account. Along with your normal users, as you mentioned, you have admin users, and any user can be made into an admin by another admin. Admins have full control by default, access to all resources, and they're also able to do things like create new users, as well as to change and manage the settings within UCP. So user default permissions are all well and good when you want coarse-grained access. But what happens when you want to set more granular access to, to specific containers? The first thing that we do is set teams. So teams consist of groups of users. So for example, I might have a team PM, which consists of user A. And I might have team dev, which consists of users B and C. On its own, teams aren't very useful except as an organizational construct. 
However, you can connect teams to containers, uh, to container access control through the form of labels. A label is something you can apply to a container, in order, it's a key value pro uh, property that you can apply to containers in order to specify uh, given aspects of this container. In this case, we're gonna specify an access label through com.ucp.access, and that's something that you can see easily within the UCP GUI. Within a given label, you can set one of these levels of access control to a specific team. So if I set a label called production, and this is for containers that I'm going to run in production, I can apply one of these levels of access to that production label for any given team. So for team PM, PMs may not necessarily need to have the ability to do all, uh, to access all parts of the container. Maybe they, maybe they only need to view it, but they're not allowed to actually edit it. For these PMs, we would then provide view only access. However, your development team may need to have full access to containers with the production label. Thus, we could give them full control to that same label. This ensures that they're able to do things like start and stop and kill containers and edit them mid-flight if they need to do so. So from this construct, you can see that the users have their own individual sets of permissions, which are applied to unlabeled containers or are applied to non-container resources such as images, networks, and volumes. Then, the users can be placed within teams which have specific levels of access to a given container through the container's label. In this case, user A, uh, who normally has view-only access, also has view-only access to the production label through the team PM. Users B and C, who have differing levels of access to most resources, both have full control as part of the dev team to any containers with the label production. So through a combination of user default permissions, as well as label-based permissions for teams, you can define access control in both broad and specific manners within your universal control plane environment. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please check out the next video in the series.